All right, hey, what's up, everybody? So I'm gonna open this one in prayer because I wanna make sure that Holy Spirit uh, doesn't let me forget any important points. So let's open up in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I just invite you to fill me up afresh right now, Lord, with your Holy Spirit overflowing. Um, and I just ask, Lord, would you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that is not coming from you? <clears throat> I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, will you please prevent me from um, forgetting any any important points? Um, you know the topic that I want to teach here, Lord, that, that you have kind of prompted me to teach. <clears throat> I just ask, Lord, will you please sharpen my mind right now? And um, just have your way here, Lord. I submit my mouth to you, my tongue to you. <clears throat> and I just ask, Lord, will you please just take over and teach what you want to teach, how you want to teach it, Lord, with all the points that you want to make. I ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, this should be a short video unless Holy Spirit just totally takes over and uh, says stuff that I'm not planning on saying. But I just want to make kind of a simple point in, in my opinion but so when was it I think it was like 2015 I went to this little church event thing and I believe it was advertised yeah that's right it was a little postcard thing a little advertisement it was about uh, it was titled um, something along the lines of like your identity in Christ right so I go to this church event thing, and long story short, I mean, yeah, they, they definitely talked about your identity in Christ, but they also talked about how important it is to really, you know, uh, cultivate that intimacy with Holy Spirit and allow God to mature you and train you and teach you and tell you who you are in Christ and yada, 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 you know, before you uh, get married, you know? And this <clears throat> kind of ties in <clears throat> a lot of different topics all together. So I'm just going to briefly kind of brush on how God is the one who chooses your spouse. If you are truly a Christian and you are walking um, with Jesus, you are abiding in Jesus, meaning that you are living your life every day, all day, in unceasing prayer, which is what conversation with God. It's both talking to God and listening, right, with Holy Spirit the voice of wisdom, um, God will choose your spouse. And um, hopefully, I believe at some point, I'll be able to come on here and share a whole testimony with you guys of how God brought me together with my spouse. It hasn't happened yet, <laughs> but um, but I know I've heard other testimonies and, and whatnot. Okay, um, so God will bring you together with your spouse in a supernatural way. There was a couple that I met... <sighs> A long time ago when I was still living in Jersey and um, long story short they had told me that God had given them both the same exact dream about each other you know and just cool like cool little testimonies like that okay like you don't as, as a Christian you're not gonna find your spouse in a bar or on the dating site I mean I personally don't believe God's going to work through a dating site. Could he? Of course he could. God's God. God can do whatever he wants. So, I mean, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I I just think it's highly unprobable that you're going to that God's going to bring you together with someone through a dating site. That's just my personal opinion, but whatever. So, <clears throat> cuz I have been on the dating sites on and off for years and it's just nonsense. Anyway, um so Holy Spirit, please get me back on track. Um, so anyway, yeah. So they were talking about how important it is, uh, how important it is to be established and rooted in Christ and in your identity in Christ before you try to get involved in any kind of romantic situation. <clears throat> and then they kind of blew me away with the following concept. They had... A married couple come on and talk about how you know how they met and blah 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 whatever but here's what here's what blew me away they did not kiss like tongue kiss French kiss whatever you want to call it they did not kiss I forget if it was until they got engaged or until they were married I forget which it was but 
they didn't kiss until either they were engaged or married. And it blew me away. Like this was such a novel concept to me. And I was like, what? Right? Because we're, because we are at the end of the age and because the worldly, ungodly lifestyles, lifestyle habits, norms, customs of the world have infiltrated the quote unquote church. Well, no. The, the, the church, the body of Christ, so much so that there really is barely any distinction between the world and the church, the world and the body of Christ. And it just blows me away how so many people who call themselves Christians are so ignorant of this <clears throat> lack of distinction. The Bible says to come out of her. The Bible says to be holy, right? God says be holy as I am holy. Holy means to be set apart, okay? But yet, overall, by and large, the church, the body of Christ, or those who call themselves Christians anyway, are not set apart. They are not holy. You could have someone who's a non-believer standing right next to someone who claims to be a believer or even is a believer and there you you could barely tell the difference in in their lives and so anyway i was blown away by this concept and i was like wow like not kissing you know the world teaches us that like you know that that's one of the first thing like the the like norm in our society is like, you know, you kiss someone as quickly as possible, you know, on the first date, you know, you try to get a kiss or, you know, whatever. And, you know, so as time has gone on in my journey, I was listening to Derek Prince. If you haven't listened to Derek Prince, go check him out. Derek Prince, D-E-R-E-K is how I believe his first name is spelled. Um, he's deceased now. I believe he originally was from the UK. I forget. I don't think it was America. Um, very wise man. Very, very wise man. Um, and I think he even wrote a book with one of his wives or whatever about being, uh, how God is a matchmaker or something. I haven't read the book, but I've listened to some of his sermons. Um, and he teaches that Christians do not need to date. And I agree. Because when you've got the living, breathing, almighty God, who nothing is impossible for, and you surrender your life to God as your Lord, okay, that, that's another problem in the body of Christ, is that everybody is saved, but very few are actually living their lives with God as their Lord, with Jesus as Lord. Living their lives, you know, set apart, holy letting him purge you and mature you and, um, or I guess I shouldn't say you, but, you know, people aren't letting God do that. You know, they aren't submitting and surrendering and, you know, um, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, that's not the point of this video, but it is tied into all this. Um, Holy Spirit, please get me back on track. What was the point I was building up to? Um, where were we, God? Um, right, so if, you're, if, if you've made Jesus, if you've made the Trinity Lord in your life, then you increasingly trust God with every aspect of your life, including your desire for a spouse, okay? And you trust that in his perfect timing, in his perfect way, he will bring the perfect match, the perfect spouse for you. And, um, oh, Holy Spirit, I feel foggy. Please give me clarity right now, God. Please have your way right here. Please say what you want me to say, God. Um, right, okay. So the main point the Holy Spirit wants me to make is this. And I, I really don't think I have to elaborate on this because we're all human, right? Um, when you kiss with tongue, when you French kiss or whatever you, term you want to call it, 
that very much so does or definitely has the potential to trigger what? Sexual arousal. <clears throat> okay? I don't think I need to get into that anymore. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And so there is so much wisdom in not kissing, as, as a Christian, in not kissing your romantic partner. So even if, okay, so even if you're, you're doing everything right, right, and you're, you're living your life with, with Jesus as your Lord, and you're abiding in the Holy Spirit every day, and, you know, God finally brings you the right person, and y'all are getting to know each other, I don't want to say dating, you know, but you're, you're courting. That was something else that this uh, little conference thing that I went to made it a, a distinction of is there's a difference between dating and courting, okay? Dating is, um, what comes to mind is that sermon by Tori Roberts. I'm probably going to put that in, in the description box below. Dating is kind of like taking someone for a test drive of just like, eh, eh, right? Like it's Tori Roberts kind of makes a joke about that in his sermon. So there's a sermon by Tori Roberts. Um, it's titled something about how to find your soulmate or something. I will put that sermon in the description box below. Go watch it. It's really great and it includes a testimony. It's really, really, like, if if you're still kind of fumbling around regarding this whole getting married thing and finding the right spouse thing, like, go watch that sermon. I'll put it below. Um, but uh, that's what dating is. Dating is the world's way of coming together with someone. Dating is, you know, just meet someone randomly and, you know, hop in bed with them and blah, 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 and whatever, right? I mean, it, it, it doesn't have to include that, but, but dating is just like, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Dating is not involving the Holy Spirit. Dave, uh, dating is excluding God. It's just you in your own uh, worldly ways, in your flesh, in your, in your own strength, um, in your own worldly wisdom, uh, in your pride, just being like, oh, let me just try this person out, you know, and just, you know, uh, kind of uh, haphazard, you know, that's what dating is. Um, courting, on the other hand, I mean, there's different definitions, I guess you could say. I mean, courting is more respectful and appropriate and da 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 because there are people that are non-believers or not walking with Jesus who try to court there I think they're very few and far between but <clears throat> but as Christians the definition of courting would be God picks the person God brings you two together in a supernatural way God is involved and God is in charge and you are operating in such a way where you are applying wisdom from biblical principles um, <clears throat> now here's the point, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to make. So I recently was having a conversation with someone and, um, this topic came up and this person, um, got all triggered, got all upset and raised their voice and yada, yada, yada. And they were, the point that they were making was the Bible doesn't say that the Bible doesn't say that you can't kiss. Now that's an immature babe in Christ level of comprehension of God's word. Just because the Bible doesn't specifically say something doesn't mean that there isn't revelation to be had on a heart level if you are truly abiding in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> there is certain wisdom that comes along from communion with the Holy Spirit and if you're not communing with Holy Spirit, you're not going to get that revelation. You're not going to get that wisdom. And if you're one of those people where you live a lifestyle that's very worldly, where you're constantly intoxicated with marijuana or alcohol or whatever, you're definitely not going to be getting that revelation from Holy Spirit because you're basically blocking Holy Spirit with those substances, with uh, that intoxication. So, um, but yes, if you really read the Bible... Um, especially Proverbs, you know, um, it talks about wisdom, 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 right? Wisdom is something that can only be imparted to you from the Holy Spirit. Um, I mean, yes, there are some verses that are just straight wisdom themselves that apply to specific scenarios, but not all wisdom is going to be specified 
you know, um, in the Logos Word of God. It's more so the Rhema Word of God that comes from relationship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit that will give you certain convictions that will take you deeper into what God meant and what he said in Scripture. <clears throat> um, so anyway, um, so yeah, so kissing pretty much triggers sexual arousal. At least in one person, if not both people, okay? And so that is putting yourself in the way of temptation. That is foolish. If you're trying to live a godly life and you want to start off your kingdom marriage relationship in a godly way and not ruin it, and be able to be completely at peace with yourself, your partner, and God on the day you get married with this person, or get to this person, you know, um, wisdom pretty much says, yeah, don't be kissing. If you keep it to just, you know, holding hands and just that kind of level of affection, then um, things will grow and develop in such a way that is very godly and very pure and more solid, you know, um, because you'll be cultivating true intimacy. See, that that's the problem with what the world does, is that the world just jumps into the physical intimacy, and then there's no real true heart intimacy that happens in that relationship, and then that's how dysfunction and toxicity and all that is given birth to, okay? Um, let me just pause for a second. Holy Spirit, am I forgetting any important points? Lord, if I am, will you please pop them in my head right now, God? Um, I'm not getting anything, so I think I've covered everything. Um, but yeah, this is food for prayer, okay? Food, food for prayer. Um, God will bring you together with whoever you're supposed to be with, number one. Number two... Um, that's probably not going to happen uh, unless you have been cultivating your own intimacy with Holy Spirit and allowing God, uh, allowing um, the Trinity to tell you who you are in Christ um, in terms of what, you know, gifts God wants you operating in, what your purpose is, what your calling is, um, you know, all that stuff, right? And part of becoming a mature uh, Christian is also diligently pursuing uh, your inner healing, your restoration, okay, which includes healing, deliverance, integration, okay. Um, there was another sermon I heard by Red Rocks Church, I think 2016? I could probably go try to dig that up and find it, I don't know if I will, but they were making the point in this sermon that, you know, make a list Make a list, whether you type it up, hand write it, whatever, but make a list of everything you want in your ideal spouse, right? And then try to be that. Try to be what you want in your spouse. You know, um, talk to Jesus, have a conversation with God and say, okay, Lord, um, this is what I want in a partner, but am I all these things, you know? And if I'm not, will you please convict me and help me become all these things? Okay, that's, that's the mentality that you should be in. Um, anything else, Holy Spirit? I mean, we are at the end of the age. The tribulation starts in, what, a month and a half from now? Um, I've been seeing videos, uh, Mike444 and other stuff about how other countries are now... I think I saw a title of a video that said that, like... People who haven't taken the mark of the beast aren't even allowed out in public. Like, it, it, it's about to go down. So, um, what I'm saying has truth to it. Although, being that we're at the end, God may be just supernaturally accelerating some stuff. Um, but nonetheless, you should be trying to go through the proper uh, process, you know, of allowing God to purge you and mature you and all of that and cultivating intimacy and so on and so forth. Um, you should be trying to live a godly life. You should be trying to be living a holy, which means set apart, life.
from the world. There should be a distinction between your life, your lifestyle habits, your mentality, all that from a non-believer. There should be a major distinction there. If there's not, there's a problem, okay? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of punctuate this concept. Um, wisdom says, don't kiss, don't kiss. God finally brought you together with, with the right person or you think you're with the right person or, or whatever, don't kiss. If you're trying to live a godly life and you want to wait until the right timing, um, you know, uh, and have a sexually pure relationship with your potential kingdom spouse up until the point that you get married or however you, you know, I'm not going to get into, we'll just say that, we'll just say, and until you get married, um, then don't kiss, don't kiss. Hold hands, hug, embrace, you know, a little peck on the cheek, even a little peck on, on, on the lips, but like don't let it go past that point because that's when you're then putting yourselves in the way of temptation. And, and you know what, let me say this. Um, you know, men, <laughs> I've seen a lot of misogyny going on. I'm not even gonna get into that completely right now, but I've, I've seen a lot of that. Um, but yes, God did make Adam first, and God uh, did ordain Adam to be the head. And I do validate um, that I, in, in my own observation and experience, men do have a certain anointing of authority. Um, and so what goes along with that is the responsibility that, okay, so man and woman come together. God brings man and woman together in a romantic way. I... I'm not going to say it's not on Eve, but, okay, the, the Bible even shows us and tells us that Eve is the weaker, quote-unquote, sex, okay? Um, physically speaking, we have less muscle, okay, on a, on a physical level, but obviously in terms of temptation, it could be argued bi biblically that Eve is, you know, can be... Um, a little more on the weaker side of things. And so I do believe that it is more so on Adam, it is more so on the men to be leading, even before you're married, leading in such a way that you are making proper boundaries so that the relationship is staying sexually pure until you're married. Because if the man is not doing that, then it's on Eve. And then you're putting her in a position where then she has to be the strength of the relationship. And see, that's not how God designed it. It's not how God ordained it, okay? God has both masculine and feminine characteristics and traits, and he has put the masculine into Adam, and he has put the feminine into Eve, okay? Um, one, you know, uh, and, and I'm not saying that like either of them is exclusive to either of those things, but there's more of a like percentage or portion put into. So Adam, uh, Adam has more of the strength. I'm not saying that women, that Eve doesn't have strength, but I would say that Adam has more, has more strength. Okay. And I would say that wisdom is more of a feminine thing. I, I believe that women have a little bit more wisdom than men. Um, there's just certain things that have been put more so into men and more so into women. And in this regard, regarding this topic of sexual purity, I would say that the responsibility is more so on Adam to be leading the relationship in such a way with godly boundaries to keep things sexually pure. And if Adam is not... Um, offering his strength, like John Eldridge says in all his books, if Adam is not offering his strength to Eve, to the relationship in that way, then that's a problem. Then that, that is not, it's, it's outside of how God ordained things to be, okay? Um, I'm sure some people are going to argue with me that whatever, but it, it, if you have a man who is trying to push things in an in a impure way in the relationship, that relationship off the bat, like that, that's a huge red flag. That relationship is probably, I'm gonna be careful how I phrase this, but I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it this way. I would not be surprised if that relationship has some problems and has some failures, okay? So um, anyway, 
Holy Spirit, is there anything else you want me to say? I need to put the air conditioning on. Whew, Chattanooga, more humid than I thought it would be. It is, uh, there's like a haze here so far. I, I just moved here. Any, anyway, um, <laughs> I can feel the, the humidity like rising right now in my bedroom, or my, my bedroom, my hotel room. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover on this topic, um, or that God wanted me to cover. Um, And I don't think I have to say this, but ladies, if you have a man who's pushing you in a sexually impure direction, then that man is not ready for a, he's not ready for you. He's not ready, period. Okay, he's, he's got some stuff he needs to straighten out. And, you know, everyone has their own walk, their own relationship with God and, and whatever. And yeah, no one's going to be perfect, um, but it's, it's really unfair to to Eve if um if Adam is not offering his strength but in but instead trying to take Eve backwards to sin if uh you know trying to tempt her towards sin that is not what Adam is supposed to be doing Adam is supposed to be a leader Adam is supposed to be offering his strength and if your Adam is not doing that that's a red flag that's a red flag and you definitely need to be talking to God about all that about what you should do <clears throat> um I personally would say get out and the relationship be done um at least until that person can get their themselves straightened out with God so um Holy Spirit is there anything else you want me to say on this topic I think that's it, but as always, if I forget anything or if I need to clarify anything or whatever, I will put it in the description box below. So please, again, just a reminder, always check the description boxes of my videos because sometimes I have to correct myself, clarify something, maybe I forgot something, maybe I'll put scripture uh, or links or whatever. Um, I will put that video of the Tory Roberts sermon slash testimony below. Um, Go check that out. Um, it's a really cool testimony. So yeah, go check it out. Um, and and he really does give like some 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 wisdom of like what you need to be looking for regarding a kingdom spouse and and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think that's it. I bless you all in Jesus' name.